All right, it looks like we're going. Hey, everybody. Uh, off to the right, you'll see two panels that have already been done. They're the longest panels uh, for each cabin side of a Nimble 20 that is in the process of restoration at this point. We're down to final varnish, I hope, on those. Uh, it's a real challenging environment here. I work out of this garage. Uh, this is not a um, finish shack or a finish shed. It, everything gets done here and uh, keeping things clean and dust free is near impossible, but I try. That being said, I think I have a couple coats that are usable on those. Uh, if everything totally goes wrong and I just can't make it happen, I'll go down to a semi-gloss on the interior or a satin. Right now I'm trying for a high-gloss interior. Uh, some people might disagree with that, but the boat's very small below. I want a light, lot of light reflection. Uh, and I think I can pull it off. I think it'll look good. Anyway, what I want to show you here is the roll and tip method. Uh, there's only one thing that I do that I haven't seen others do. Uh, maybe I just haven't seen it, so this is probably only one tip besides the standard uh, roll and brush for uh, big areas like this. It's just so much faster, uh, keeps down the fatigue, makes things happen, uh, I think, in a much better way. Um, so I'm going to go up and, and show you one thing here that I do. I've already done those two panels on the right, and so my brushes are saturated. Uh, my tipping brushes. I use foam. I use throwaway. Uh, I've used everything. Uh, this is kind of what I've settled on on this project. Next project might be different. Uh, you float around a little bit trying to get to your results. That being said, here's the trick. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Now this brush is pretty saturated from tipping after I've rolled the varnish off. So this is a can a varnish that I'm going to use for underneath things, places that don't matter. And what I'm doing is I'm scraping these brushes. You can see that the excess varnish off of these brushes. And what I hope to be doing while I'm doing this is also taking with it any dust that is in the on the brush that got picked up so I'm not going to move it to my next piece. I do this after every piece that I don't change the brushes out. Uh, I find that these brushes will last a long time if uh, they don't get overly saturated but you definitely do not want to put this back into your can. The can you see off to my right is the keeper can that's brand new unsullied hopefully dust free uh, this can is getting all the scrape off of the brush the tipping brush so we'll put that one there I'm going to go back here this is my second tipping brush this one's got a lot less on it because it's the one I go and use after I roll it then I tip it with that first brush then, after I tip it with that first brush, I'm going to come back and tip it one more time with the second brush. The rolling puts a lot of material on the wood, which is a good thing, but uh, you want to bring it down a little bit, and that's what this tipping does. So we're going to put this brush off to the side for the final tip. Uh, I'm going to put this off to the side somewhere where it's going to hopefully stay clean. Put it back over there. We're going to pick our next victim, which is going to be the centerboard trunk finish boards. These uh, do not hold back water. Uh, they are strictly ornamental, hiding the fiberglass centerboard in this nimble 20. Uh, I'm going to add some of my new fresh varnish. So I had plenty in my roller. And put that aside. 
Now, just from feeling this, I can feel that even though I've wiped these down multiple times getting to this point, I am not dust free. Uh, it's real challenging, um, but we're going to go over it with a tack cloth to the best of our ability. I also, because of the cold here in the garage, uh, we're about 35 outside right now, it's probably 45 in this garage. I've got a heater running, which is not my best choice because uh, the heater's going to throw out some dust, uh, but not a choice I really have a lot of answer to because if I don't use it, this varnish is going to stay tacky for so much longer. Uh, this is traditional uh, old Z spar product, high build spar varnish. So, a couple spots. I like to do a feel test. Uh, some people don't like it because of oil on hands and etc. etc. I haven't had that much problems. Uh, even with the exotic stuff, I don't have that much problem. But with this uh, standard resin varnish, it's going to be fine. So we're going to call this one done. And we're going to start. We'll move this back. Move this back. Now this is just a standard uh, foam roller. I've lined the pan with fiberglass or with uh, um, aluminum foil just to help me keep it clean. I'll reuse the pans when I can. Uh, so we're just going to start rolling our product on. Um, these bubbles are not a problem. Don't worry about them. You'll see them disappear when we tip. In fact, they kind of work good because I like an even pattern in the bubbles. When I'm done, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, right now we're just doing the coat. You can see that it's clear in some areas and bubbly in others. In the clearer areas, the varnish is heavier. I'll show you what we're going to do about that. Right now. We're just putting on our first coat. Because these panels are horizontal and as I move them around for drying, they will remain horizontal. Uh, I can put on a fairly heavy coat without worrying about uh, curtains and stuff like that. Uh, not that I want a super heavy coat, but I do like heavier than not. I don't like thin coats. Um, so I run these a little bit on the heavy side. This is, I hope, a final coat. <laughs> you never can tell. Uh, a lot of things in play. Now I'm going back over the whole thing. And what I'm looking for is that consistent bubble pattern. Uh, and why I'm looking for that is, is that going to tell me that my coating is a uniform thickness throughout. That those clear areas are bubbled out. And that I probably have a close to uniform amount of material on the whole thing. This is important, uh, I think. Uh, to get a good final coat, get all your coats, you want to keep them uniform. So I'm going over this a few times to get that pattern, get it spread out evenly on the boards. Now we're going to go for the tip. Nothing much to it. We're going to start at one end and drag down to the other. Start at one end, drag down to the other. I'll go back over this again. I got a little off center. There we go. Now up here, I'm just going to go to the edge. Go to the edge here. And I'm going to start here. Go across. You can see that leveling out. I say my only fear in this whole process is dust. Uh, I was a little dismayed 
Um, the longer piece is off to the right, but uh, it really turned out to not be dust. It turned out to be bubbles. They're looking pretty good. Uh, I may be disappointed in the morning. Uh, right now, confidence is high. So there we go. That's the first tipping. It is by no means done. Because of the amount of finish I put on it, I'm going to put this one off here for now. I'm going to get my second brush. Now, these brushes are cheap. That's the beauty of them. If I don't like my second tipping here, and I'm unhappy with it, uh, it's kind of just uh, how it looks. Right now it's looking pretty good. I'll go and start a whole nother brush. I have no qualms about throwing a buck, buck and a half away at this point in the game. Uh, so, we are still building finish in the tipping brush. I'll show it to you. Um, I may I'll go take this over to that other can just back behind you. I'll be gone for a moment. I think I'm going to scrape this clean. Which is what I'm doing right now. Into that can of, uh, you know, undercoating varnish. Varnish I'll use for the undersides of things, inside cabinets. Places where I'm just primarily waterproofing. Uh, the boards that, you know, go in the fiberglass cutouts for access below the hatches and stuff like that. This is all usable material for that, but it is not usable for your final coats or even your intermediate coats of varnish because a lot of crud could be in it. And quite frankly, crud scares me. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking one more tip. So we're going to do one more. With this brush, you can see yeah, a real nice tip. Now, when uh, you're using chemical varnishes, by chemical varnish, I mean varnish that cures with a catalyst, you got to be a little bit faster. Uh, that's the beauty of resin varnish. It's uh, not going to dry on me. Not going to get drag out. It's going to flow back out because uh, it's got plenty of time before it cures. So even though my brush strokes are visible to a certain extent, I know that when I'm done here, I'll get flow out still. The product's going to take a long time to dry. Nice amber traditional varnish. And there she is. We're going to call this one done. We're going to put it off to the side. Uh, Remember your scrapes, have a used can around, and uh, that's the only tip I have really that's different than anybody else's tips. Uh, scrape the brushes clean. That's it.